So last time we assembled the Hogwarts castle out of recyclable materials and today I'm going to be painting it. I um, have all my supplies out that I'm going to be needing. I've got some different brushes, um, different sizes, uh, mostly large brushes because I think if I want to do any detail work like let's say on the cones on the tops of the towers I might just use a paint marker or something like that to go and kind of give the look of like little um, shingles or something going on on the roof but I do have mostly my bigger brushes I have this brush because I might want to do a little bit of kind of make it look like moss or something growing on the side so I might just come in and tap some on here and there to kind of make it look aged I've got um, some palette of course I've got paint water and uh, a rag so I can dry my brush off because this is all mostly paper so I don't want to have excess water on my brush and possibly damage uh, the look or warp the paper so I've got all my acrylic paints I'll be using. I just pulled out some colors that I kind of expect to use and I might I might have to go run and grab some other colors. I got some basics, uh, some navy blue, I think for the cones, I'm thinking a lot of gray, but in case I need some shadow, I've got some white and black to darken or lighten that up. I got a regular gray. I've got some colors that I can sort of mix and match to uh, tap on my uh, little bit of moss here and there. So those colors for that, it's kind of a mucky green and a yellow to brighten it up. And then I'm thinking, um, at least on the roof of the Great Hall, I definitely want to have something metallic. Probably not solid metallic because you have to do so many coats of that, but I definitely want a little shine somewhere on this uh, cool little pattern we've got going on here with the strawberry container that we used. Um, I've also got my glue gun plugged in, laying on a mat. So I've got plenty of glue sticks for that. And I have some moss. Uh, that I might decide in the end to come and just kind of glue some on here and there I've got pebbles and different things like that, too I don't know that I'm feeling that right now, but we'll kind of see after I get all the colors on there what I want to do with all that um, You're gonna see maybe multiple coats on something like this because of the, the shine on there It's gonna take a few coats um, but I might on something like this I sometimes start with the one that I know is going to need multiple coats So that way after I paint this I kind of go around do the whole thing and by the time I come back around to it It's ready for its second coat. So we'll go ahead and start getting some color on this On a project like this I usually start off sitting down because I tell myself this is going to be relaxing and I just want to sit down and enjoy it um, but then since it's kind of a bigger project I sometimes feel like I can do better if I stand over it and really see what I'm doing and especially when you're kind of trying to look into these little small areas it's a little hard to see what you're doing in there if you're sitting down so I like to stand up and get most of this part done maybe unless I'm doing some of the detail work I was going to do some little small tedious work on like let's say drawing some of the tiles on if I decide to do that on the cones on the roof um it might be better to sit down anyways that way you don't wiggle around too much and maybe uh, lose your balance and mess up so better to have a steady arm and a steady body while you're doing that and I should have known I'd used quite a bit of the gray so I should have gone ahead and given myself a whole bunch of that because on the paper part of this wherever there's the cardboard like on the tubes it's really soaking up a lot of it he painted and colored really well on the, uh, the tin can I think I nicked it a couple places with my knuckle as I was going around so that's why you see that spot there where it didn't quite cover it but with the paintbrush it did cover it pretty well the first time around so I'm kind of impressed with this paint I just got these on sale actually on clearance at Walmart so you can see that little Walmart clearance sticker there so they still make this one even though it was a clearance product it's not um it's not discontinued or anything I think the color was just one they were getting rid of uh but two dollars for a paint that covers this well. I think that's a pretty good deal. I am using on this one a brush that is not one of my favorites. It's kind of one of those rougher brushes. Um, maybe it's one of those camel hair brushes. I don't know. It's kind of like a smaller version of this kind of a brush so it's a little scruffy to begin with uh, because I know that getting into some of these corners I'm not going to be able to do that uh, while treating the brush very nicely so because I have to be a little rough with it I want to make sure this isn't a brush that I'm going to be sad if I mangle the bristles all up because some of your nicer ones like this one is not going to uh, do too well if you have to cram it into these small little spaces. My plan is to go around and get the whole um, 
bottom part, I guess, of the castle, painted with this gray color. And like I said, kind of come full circle back around to that uh, starting point where I uh, started on what I think is going to require a few coats. So if I need another coat, I can do one on the can, but I'm definitely not going to need another coat on any of these other areas on the paper. The cardboard covered really well. Um, and then after this, I'm going to start working on the roof and do a zone color up there. That's why I've got the navy blue. So you kind of do all the, the big sections first, and this is how I would tackle any painting, you know, canvas painting as well. Um, any painting project, I do the big parts first. You do your background, and then you do your highlights, your low lights, you do your shadow, you do your uh, detail work at the very end. Um, and then, of course, any like kind of multimedia type stuff you want to glue on there, like the moss or the pebbles. Or I was even thinking about some sand. I've got some oh, kind of crusty beach sand in a jar that I could use to kind of, uh, if I brush a little bit of glue on, I might be able to texture an area. And I thought that might look kind of cool. You could even put sand, mix it into your paint. And that way you could just be painting the sand right on there and it would be the same color as your background. So that's just a, an idea if you want to try something like that. Give a castle a little rough look somewhere. So it looks like maybe something happened to the wall. I think that's kind of cool. Gives it some character. You know, these kind of things remind me of like the uh, little Christmas villages that people put up. And then there's, there's even those train train villages that everybody's seen, you know, those miniatures that people make. And those are so cool to look at, you know, because all the little little tiny scenes are so cute. Um, but why don't people have like a mini, I don't know, mini Hogwarts, mini, mini uh, Hogsmeade village in their house. I think that could be a cool thing to start. But this could be a... A way to begin one of those. All right, so now I don't even think I want to wash my brush because the gray will mix well with the with the navy blue. I don't think I need to worry too much about that. Um, you know, it's not like it's yellow or red or some color I don't want going in there. I think it's complementary enough. I can go ahead and do my uh, navy blue on the roof and on the cones, the peaks here. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. And I think it might even give it a neat look if it does have a little bit of gray in it as I'm painting along. So let's do that. And then I uh, decide what's going to get a little bit of the metallic shine on there. So I got this one right here that I might use. I might even continue to mix a little bit of gray onto my brush with the blue because I kind of like the way that's turning out. So as I was looking at this, I decided uh, to go digging through my Halloween craft bin. And um, I found that I still had a whole bag of the fake spider webs. And, you know, I don't like using this stuff like crazy I don't I don't like putting big globs of it because then it doesn't look realistic anymore when you just throw it on like cotton uh you know it looks like big lumps but um a little tiny bit of it just stretched really thin could look really cool on this and I even thought about maybe seeing if I have some of those little plastic or rubber spiders that I could incorporate too kind of thinking a little throwing a little aragog somewhere on there might be kind of cool and put a little bit of shadow in there with some of the black. I'm just kind of throwing it on there wherever on the edges. But oh my gosh, what you know would be so cool would be because whenever you see the Hogwarts castle, you think Christmas time, you think winter, because a lot of times they show it in, in the movies when they show it, uh, you know, it's snowing outside. Um, so a little bit of some snow text kind of dabbed on the roof in different places would look so, so cool. And maybe just like let it gather on wherever you've got like some, some little, uh, you know, uh, right along the, the roof here, wherever there would be a little groove or something going on. And you could even, uh, if you wanted to create an illusion of something maybe like, I don't know, like a doorknob or something sticking out somewhere or even like add a little door or window somewhere, you could always cut a little piece of cardboard. And let me try to gently slide this around. You could cut a little piece of cardboard and hot glue it on there before you paint it. Um, and you can just use hot glue itself to sort of, you know, make like little bumps and knobs and things like that on here if you wanted to um, before you go and paint it. And then just paint right over the globs of hot glue and nobody knows any different. So you can kind of see some hot glue right there where I glued the, the strawberry things on. So it just kind of made it like a little lump there that you can paint over, but you could do it intentionally and it might look kind of cool. Uh, so there's that. Just want a little bit of the darker color underneath before I put some silver on top so it's not real real light but just thinking about lightening it up anyways kind of gave me the idea of putting some snow on there which I might have to do because I really love this stuff the snow tech stuff is so cool and you don't really get to use it a lot on different projects so I think I might throw a little bit on here so you guys see and maybe also just kind of darken up the tips of the roof maybe think like 
this is kind of where it gets dirty or worn down so just kind of brushing right over the tip there until your brush kind of runs out of paint just brush it downward until it paint just trails off now just some advice with the metallic paints they have a lot of separation when they're when they haven't been used in a while so you'll find that all the liquids at the top and there's no color up there and then you know all the pigments down at the bottom so shake them really well because i did shake this thing really well and this is what i got the first time i put some out here uh it's all mostly if you can kind of see all that clear stuff at the top that's just all you know the the separation there so all the water came up to the top so then i shook it again and then i got that so if that's what you get don't think that's what your paint is supposed to look like because it's going to come out really sheer and you won't see hardly any color you just see a little flecks of of the uh the metallic in there but it'll mostly be the clear goo so i'm going to be using this one and i pour it out a second time after shaking it really well so i just get a little bit and then just kind of just kind of throw it on there just let it hit the the texture and do its own thing and maybe maybe hit, hit a little thicker in some spots where you want it to really shine but this isn't supposed to look like well for me anyways I don't want it to look like the whole thing is shiny I don't want some chrome roof but I do want to kind of have a little shine to it but still look aged and dirty and like it's been sitting around for a while and maybe even a little bit on the on the peaks on the towers too but see the shine there is going to stay like that so i like a little bit of something there this adds to it I'll do the same on the other side and now i wanted um my my little cones to sort of look rounded even though i mean they are round they're 3d shapes so um i made sure my brush strokes were kind of wispy and light and going in this little back and forth direction so it kind of forces you to see it as you know this sort of a 3d shape i mean it's kind of weird because they are 3d but i just thought if i went up and down with my with my strokes here it just wouldn't give it the same effect so i'm trying to explain that and then i'll show it but i just kind of held the brush sideways and then just sort of back and forth and from the bottom all the way up just to sort of give it that little soft uh rounded stroke on there and then I just try to get both sides of it. It's kind of hard to get around the back there because you've got the, the roof in the way. But something like that kind of, it just makes sense to see it like that. All right, I think it's time to throw this brush in the water and now I'm going to switch over and you know, the whole thing is, is pretty much done. I think I'm just gonna do my detail work now. So just a little bit of um, this uh, big scruffy brush. I'm gonna load some of both colors. I'm not going to do like half and half or anything. Not like one side green, one side yellow. I'm just going to tap along in the green and get it all over. And then uh, I don't want a big old blob of it on there, so I'm going to tap it off. And then just a little bit of yellow and kind of let those colors mix around. Ish. All right, and then I can tap this on wherever I feel like I want it to be, kind of on the bottom because I don't know the the castle's sitting on the ground, so I think any plants that are going to be growing on it are going to be coming up from the bottom so i don't really want anything on the roof but i'm just going to sort of just tap a little bit near the the base here kind of figuring that's where some little creepy climby vines would be growing just a little bit not everywhere just sort of creates a little bit of ambiance of some scenery i guess i don't know maybe i need a darker green can't tell it's kind of fluorescent anyway i'll just go all around but kind of keep it mainly at the bottom maybe creeping up a little tiny bit but not too much so. Just tap it on lightly. So I don't know. I just started looking at it and thinking, yeah, it's really cool. And I like all the the green, uh, you know, mossy stuff at the bottom. And yeah, that's awesome. But then I started thinking, I'm sure it would be cool to put a little door there. So then I pulled out some of my scrap pieces of cardboard and I cut a little door shape. And then I got my, um, these are all my clay tools. I'm thinking about finding one to just sort of maybe do a few little carvings in the door. Nothing crazy. Just this one I like to use, you know, just a little something. So it's got some, some grooves in it. Maybe just kind of like poke at it make it look like an old wooden door or something. And then you can continue up there. Um, yeah, just give it a little bit of something. And then I cut a few little strips here that I decided on this, um, the one where it was a can. I decided I'm just going to hot glue these kind of going all around. Just to, I don't know, just to create a little different look on there. But of course, then I'm going to have to paint over them, paint them the gray color to match this. 
but um you know and then you can get as creative as you want you can even use some hot glue to add a little doorknob a little door knocker you could even get some wire to make a little door knocker for this or something and i have a lot of little um interesting metal pieces and beads and charms and things like that so i might even see what i've got out of that stuff and maybe use some of that on the door but i think that's pretty simple and i could just do like a little uh maybe use like dark brown or something for the door and then stick it on there so i think i'll do that here that way when you paint over it it doesn't look like just a plain piece of cardboard it's got those little grooves in there and you can still see them really well when you paint over it it just kind of gives a little something and then i think maybe right in the center here uh, or like two of them a little two gold rings or something like that i have a whole bunch of stuff in my jewelry box that i could pull out like a jewelry making box it's got little findings and things i can stick on there so there's the door if you want you can kind of go around the edge but we know it's made of cardboard we're not fooling anybody so that's fine with me and you know what else i thought about is why not just take these little cardboard scraps and just cut some little squares that could be glued on for windows i know that i have to go back over them and paint them a little bit but you know i don't know i just need a little something on these towers maybe just every once in a while i don't have to put a whole ton of them well, let's get that little door glued on. I guess one thing you could do is paint them first and then stick them on. I don't know. I might decide to do that, but just my little door. Just kind of need a lot of glue to hold it. It's lightweight. All right, and then right on there. Oh, that's so much better. Look at that. I love that. All right. I guess I'll decide about my little window pieces. I'm going to I'm painting those what color I would paint them I don't know maybe silver that way they look shiny and they look like you know like a glass window I think I will yeah you really just need to put a little bit of shadow at the bottom of the door with some black that's why it's handy to always have a little bit of white and black nearby when you're painting because you never know when you think you find a little spot that needs a little touch up or just something to make it look more realistic or Give it the look you want. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna put windows all over this thing. Come on. You know, I don't need to look like a little house or anything. I might even leave this plain like that. But um that about you know sticking something up there, like maybe a little metal something above the door. I don't know what yet. But definitely could put a few windows here on the great hall, maybe three little windows there. That could be cool. So I've already got these lined up and they're painted silver. Very sheer though. You know, silver needs a couple of coats for you to really see it and appreciate it. So I might come back and add a little more. But there's just a little something, you know, so it's not just a plain, boring side there. So here's all my little jewelry making pieces here. And I'm thinking about finding a little gold loop that can be used like a little door knocker or something in the front. Well, I was hoping for gold, but the gold ones are kind of small. I think I'll use this one. But I wanted two of them, so here we go. Well, that's kind of cool, too. A little, it's actually a toggle, but well, something like that could work, I think. All right, so I did decide on, instead of going with the creepy look with the cobwebs, I decided to do um, some snow. So here's the snow text. Now, this stuff is kind of hard to find. I don't remember where I bought this one. might have been Hobby Lobby. They seem to have all the older style crafts that you can't find at Michael's anymore. So probably if Michael's doesn't sell it, look at Hobby Lobby first because it could be cheaper than anything you can find online. Because this, from what I've seen, that is how it goes. It's a little more expensive online. Then you have to pay for shipping too. So um, just give this thing a little stir. kind of is like a little bit like grout, but grout isn't as bright white. So um, I guess you could probably make something like this out of maybe plaster and throw something textured in there. Well, sand, like I was talking about earlier in your paint. But um, this has kind of a funny smell. And it does have something textured in there, kind of like sand. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, but just give it a stir before you use it because, you know, it could be a little dry in some spots. And you just need to get the all that mixed around. And then I use a popsicle stick because I it doesn't really wash off. It does kind of... Uh, on the lip here you can feel where it's dry um, and it's a lot like cement there so it, it doesn't work well on a paintbrush but take a little bit on your popsicle stick and you know wherever you think that on a roof it might might have gathered just a tiny tiny bit you don't really want to put a whole bunch of this stuff on there just a little bit kind of brush it off and then let it kind of do what it wants to do after that 
this stuff does take a while to dry, so, you know, make sure you don't let anybody mess with it after you put this stuff on there. It stays kind of gooey for a while. But the good thing is you can move it around. It doesn't have to stay right where you place it. And I drop some, but I can pick it up and stick it somewhere. So it's kind of along the bottom there. It's kind of, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm just kind of wiping it off, but I'm letting it catch in the little grooves, and it looks kind of cool. All right, so have fun with this stuff. Put it where you want. While it's wet, you can put some glitter on there if you want to. So, mm -hmm. So it's almost done, and I really don't even know what I was thinking, putting this little metal thing on there, which, you know, okay, fine, but I remember that I had these really cool, I know this isn't supposed to be like a Christmassy craft, but it's kind of turning out to be one because of the snow on the roof, and it's just so cool, but, um, you know, I want to put a little wreath on there, and I have these that I've had for a couple of Christmases, and I haven't found a use for them yet, they're just pipe cleaners, little chenille stems and um they look they're supposed to look like pine they're supposed to look like a you know a little something you could use for a christmas tree or a wreath so i'm just gonna poke this out the bottom here i don't have to open the whole thing and um i never cut these with scissors because the wires in there are so tough you know be able to cut it with scissors yeah but why would you want to ruin your scissors so i always use these it's silly as it seems sometimes and i'll just cut myself enough to to spin it around and you know twist it into a, a wreath and then I don't think I really need to twist it together because I can just glue it. I think I'll just stick it right there above the door. And I even pulled out a little bit of red ribbon that I can tie around it to make a bow. Or I can just, you know, glue the bow. Whatever. But, um, yeah, because I was thinking this thing did need some red somewhere. I was thinking maybe I could put a little red berries on the... The, uh, the moss that's on the side here that I tapped on with the green and yellow. But this is even better because I'll just put a tiny little red bow. I don't need red all around. Just a little something because it, the colors were a little dull and I wanted something bright. So there's my little pieces there. I'm going to get this glued on. And then it'll be done. So this was never intended to be a Christmas craft, but I'm so glad that that is how it turned out because I really love the way it looks with the snow and the little wreath on there. It just really screams Hogwarts when I look at it. And I think, of course, the more time you spend, the cooler this could look. You can really add as much detail as you want. I mean, you can go, you can get as crazy as, you know, adding like one little shingle at a time to the roof. You can cut up popsicle sticks and get kind of used pieces of it to sort of layer them starting at the bottom and do go around, do a ring of those and then overlap with another ring until you reach the top the peak of it um but i think it looks really cool the way it is you could never tell that this started off as a box a whole bunch of tubes some pieces of paper a tin can and some strawberry containers